Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the important developments of the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. So today on Cardano Insights, something a little different from the normal format of multiple ecosystem developments, I wanted to cover a specific project that I feel to a certain degree is going under the radar of the wider community, despite the fact that they've not only delivered their initial protocol on mainnet, but are actively innovating in the Cardano DeFi scene. So let's talk AA to finance. In my opinion, they're one of the most underrated DeFi projects building on Cardano. When considering the way the protocol development, delivery of V1, and iterations that have continued to improve the platform since its inception have been handled, they're showing all the signs of a project that's going to play a major role in the long-term success of a healthy DeFi ecosystem on Cardano. We've covered the progress and development surrounding this project right from the very beginning of Cardano Insights and for good reason. Like many projects building on Cardano, I've tracked AADA right the way back when it initially introduced itself into the ecosystem and I have to say Mantis and the team have consistently executed upon all the project milestones and promises made to the community in a very open, transparent and capable fashion. When we think about some recent events that saw the demise of two highly anticipated projects that had much bigger development teams, hype in the community and VC funding, yet were still unable to deliver any kind of product before distastefully exiting the ecosystem, it makes me appreciate the real, genuine builders that are actually bring in that use, utility and importantly, innovating in the Cardano DeFi space even more. I've said it many times, but it's more often the case that the hype trains get derailed and the builders who take the heads down and modest approach to development seem to be the ones who not only stand the test of time, but actually deliver a product of note. So briefly, for some background on the project itself, for those who are not familiar, AIDA Finances appear to be a lending and borrowing platform who have pioneered the NFT bond concept, an innovation only made possible due to Cardano's EUTXO architecture. In September, AIDA launched their V1 protocol, which marked the introduction of the first peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing platform that facilitates the lending of Cardano native tokens in the ecosystem. The protocol enables users or borrowers to create borrower requests, settle the terms such as the loan amount, collateral, interest rate, repayment period, and desired asset in an order book style format. Other users or lenders can then browse the market on the AA to DAP and choose to fund loans being requested if the terms set by the borrower meets the lender's criteria. Once a loan request is funded, an NFT bond is issued that defines all the terms and collateral held in the smart contract. The interesting thing about these NFT bonds is the utility this opens up for both the borrower, lender and other market participants, which we're going to get into in a little more detail later on. But back to the loans. In short, once a loan is issued, if the borrower returns a loan within the time period agreed, using the NFT bond, they will reclaim the collateral, pay the interest defined, and the liquidity provider or lender receives both the interest and original loan amount, all of which is handled automatically by the smart contract. In the event a borrower has taken a loan but fails to return within the agreed period, the loan provider can simply liquidate the loan, receiving the locked collateral in the smart contract, in effect recouping the value lost in the initial loan. So the collateral is effectively the safety net to ensure lenders are protected when choosing to loan funds peer-to-peer -peer, and this creates that trustless environment. Now whilst the delivery of the AA to Finance V1 DAP has been a success, as is the nature of peer-to-peer -peer finance, similar to MusiSwap's order book decks, from a participation point of view, peer-to-peer -peer requires two parties to match a specific request for the order to be executed and to increase the volume of user activity on the platform. This as you can imagine has its limitations, for liquidity providers to actually find loans that meet all of their funding terms, such as sufficient collateral, decent interest returns and desired repayment period is easier said than done when it's the borrower who currently determines all of these parameters. But as ever, the team at AADA haven't been sleeping on this, and with a protocol upgrade that will take effect on Monday the 19th of December, we will see the introduction of two new features that will enhance the user experience, utility for the protocol, and go a long way to increase the user participation on the AADA Finance platform. So, to improve the platform's current limitations as a result of its supply and demand efficiency, the team aims to address this with the introduction of the latest upgrade, Enter Liquidity Deposits or Lenders Requests. So this coming Monday, they will introduce the Lender Request feature that will enable lenders or liquidity providers to create lending requests or liquidity deposit positions. Similar to the current borrower requests, now lenders will have the ability to create lend requests, specify all the terms, for example the loan amount, interest, collateral required and repayment period terms. 
This feature will enable lenders to provide readily available liquidity onto the marketplace, increasing incentives for lenders to more actively participate with the DAP. Potential borrowers will then have the option to not only create a loan request themselves as they can do now, but also browse the marketplace for a lender request that suits their criteria and in effect obtain instant liquidity rather than having to wait for a match on a submitted borrower request. The introduction of the lender request feature really enhances the peer-to-peer -peer experience as it will enable both lenders and borrowers the ability to create the borrower or lend requests, giving them full control over specifying the complete terms, which in essence delivers the fairest peer-to-peer -peer loan environment. Once the update takes place, there will be separate categories for liquidity requests and liquidity deposits with detailed guidelines and explanations to deliver the smoothest user experience. The lender request feature was audited by Vacuum Labs, which I've linked in the description below if you want to take a look at the finer details. But December 19th won't just see the introduction of lender requests. Along with this update, the NFT bond marketplace will be made fully operational on the DAP, which is something that will go a long way in enabling users to really begin to leverage the utility behind this innovative NFT bond concept. The introduction of the NFT bond marketplace will facilitate a whole new category of traders in the Cardano ecosystem. The NFT bond is like a key to the vault where the locked collateral and loan terms are held in the smart contract. Only the holders of these NFT bonds have the ability to interact with the smart contracts on the AADA dApp. The NFT bonds can be traded or transferred just like any other NFT on Cardano. So with this in mind, the value held within these loan bonds are redeemable by anyone who holds the NFT bond, provides it to the dApp and fulfills the loan conditions set out in the initial creation. The emergence of the secondary NFT bond marketplace provides great opportunity for borrowers prior to liquidation to minimise the damage of personal insolvency, for lenders prior to the loan terms finishing, and arbitrages to buy out bad debts at nominal prices for profit by acquiring the loan bonds to then in turn meet the loan conditions and acquire the collateral deposits held within. For example, if a borrower prior to liquidation is aware that for whatever reason they're going to be unable to repay the loan and recoup their collateral, the NFT bond can be listed on JPEG's store and sold to recoup some of the value rather than losing the entire collateral. Borrowers now have an option to trade the bond and limit the damage. The new bondholder can then fulfill the loan terms and will receive the full collateral in return profiting from the initial trade. In a similar respect, a lender who say has provided a loan but before the term is up for whatever reason needs the tokens or value returned, they can also sell the NFT bond which then provides the ownership to a new holder who will see out the loan term and redeem the value once the borrower returns the funds or is liquidated. So this new feature will give a practical utility to the NFT bonds while minimising the loss ratio for insolvent debtors that are using the platform. All NFT bond listings will be scraped and displayed within the AIDA Finance DAP, creating a dedicated marketplace for users to browse the loan bonds available, view all the specifics surrounding each individual loan, and in turn, purchase the bond. I've mentioned many times in previous coverage how the NFT bond concept, which is unique to Cardano, has great potential to add a new and innovative marketplace to our ecosystem. By incorporating a dedicated marketplace within the AIDA DAP, who have pioneered this concept, is the first step to really gain traction here and bring the bond market to life. I'm fully expecting now that AIDA will be introducing this marketplace, where the bonds can be verified, browsed and obtained all within their platform, then in turn this is likely to have a very positive effect on users actually engaging in this type of trading activity. So the introduction of lenders requests and the integrated NFT bond marketplace will signify the final pieces of the V1 development for 2022, but the evolution of AIDA Finance is set to continue throughout 2023. AIDA Finance, as specified in their original development roadmap and communicated consistently by the team, intends to ultimately deliver pooled lending to the protocol, which in contrast to peer-to-peer -peer, enables instant loans through liquidity pools and provides users the ability to act as liquidity providers to those pools to earn yield based on participation levels. What I really admire about AADA's approach is rather than taking a lengthy development route with a focus solely on pooled lending, which from a market perspective is by far the more attractive product, they've been able to bring peer-to-peer -peer lending to Cardano and in addition introduce the NFT bond concept which has in turn delivered further utility to the Cardano ecosystem all before their final product has been released. There's a lot to be said about having a working protocol with active users and to use this as the platform to build upon, an approach that I think could well pay dividends in the future, not only from the experience the team has gained through building and deploying on Cardano, but also the fact that as a result, they've already proved in real time their ability to develop and deliver a secure, efficient protocol and valuable use case.
This momentum can now be carried through as they continue to evolve V1, which from my understanding will be delivered in an iterative approach where rather than a full development and launch of the V2 protocol in one action, the development of V2 will be carried out in stages, the protocol will receive a number of updates that will step by step incorporate pooled lending alongside their peer to peer lending in almost a hybrid model offering the best of both worlds and retaining their innovative NFT born concept throughout. Now aside from these new feature updates that are very soon to arrive in the DAP, AADA Finance also has some interesting governance proposals that have just recently been voted upon in the AADA DAO forum. Any member of the AADA community is able to use the DAO forum to create discussions and submit proposals that can reshape and improve the AADA Finance protocol. Once a proposal submitted reaches the threshold set of 50 votes or more in favour, the proposal is then taken on chain via the AADA Finance DAP, where AADA token holders can have the final say to whether or not the said proposal gets implemented. We've discussed numerous proposals and votes on previous episodes, but I wanted to share with you some of the recent proposals that have just passed the initial stage, and if implemented, will no doubt go a long way in improving the protocol and AADA token utility further. First up, the proposal to add both Indigo Protocol's Indie Token and IUSD as borrowable assets. Any token that can be used to lend or borrow on the platform must go through the governance process. So far, 15 Cardano native assets have already gone through this process and in turn have formally been added to the platform. The introduction of Indie and IUSD will further enhance the asset offering and will be voted upon on-chain during the next governance vote, which I believe the snapshot will be taken in Epoch 383. Further to this, the community has also proposed the creation of a treasury that would be funded using service fees on the AADA protocol. The protocol intends to fund a treasury to support the project and incentivize the AADA token holders by introducing a principal platform fee on the collected loan repayments and liquidations. In terms of the AADA service fees collected, 50% of this will be used to buy AADA on the open market which will be added to the treasury and the other 50% will be airdropped to AADA token holders relevant to the percentage of their token holders. Holdings. In turn, AADA token holders will not only earn an additional AADA income, they'll be part of a growing treasury and have a say in how these funds are to be best utilised through the governance process. For example, this in could include the further distribution of the treasury funds to AADA token holders, be used to fund protocol development, improve marketing efforts and so on. In addition, the community has also proposed the implementation of an AADA buyback mechanism which has also recently passed the initial stage and will be moved to on-chain voting. Introducing a buyback mechanism will give the AADA token a more sustainable utility. The solution aims to tackle downward pressure that reduces the token retention rate. The overall procedure will in effect use the locked AADA held in the platform smart contracts to delegate to a stake pool. The collected AADA rewards will then be used to buy AADA through an AMM DEX platform and the accumulated AADA will be stored in the protocol's treasury wallet, which again can be utilised by the AADA community through the governance process. All these proposals have come as a result of an engaged community who intend on seeing the growth and development of the AADA protocol continue in a sustainable, rewarding and decentralised manner. So if you're an AADA token holder, be sure to stay locked into the project's socials to be notified when the on-chain voting goes live so you can have your say in the ongoing development and governance decisions. I've also linked a helpful article and video from the team on the lender request implementation, the project's main documents hub if you wanted to carry out some further research, and the main AADA Finance DAP link for you to explore the platform further, all in the description below. So that's it for today's instalment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and like me, want to see the evolution of the Cardano DeFi scene set the standard industry wide, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, which is the best way you can help support the channel. We'll be back soon with your Cardano roundups, but until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.